Good morning, everybody. No uh, song today, no joke at the top. It doesn't feel right, and we are all um, here waiting to hear the latest on Damar. Damar Hamlin, we all saw what happened yesterday. We'll have all of the updates we can, but we're still awaiting something from the Bills. Here's what we got last night to just sort of set the scene here. Damar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field and he was transferred to the UC Medical Center for further testing and treatment. He's currently sedated and listed in critical condi condition. Now we know his agent was visiting with Robin Roberts this morning. He was at the hospital we know that Stefan Diggs, several players, went and visited. We also know that all the Bills players have officially gotten on the plane and gone back to Buffalo. So we're waiting to find out something this morning. We are currently waiting for something official and hoping, uh, as I've reached out to tons of reporters, tons of voices, and we'll have some on our show today, for hopeful news. And that's, that's sort of all we can do here. We've all seen... So many games, tons of plays, a bunch of injuries, bad ones. And you always think you're getting the thumb. Sometimes you get a wave on the cart. Sometimes it's just affirming body language. But there's always something, something when a player is in distress on the football field that where we can collectively anticipate the relief that we will feel once that exchange occurs, once we know that they're okay. And that didn't happen last night. Damar Hamlin was doing what he loved one minute, what he lived for, his dream. And in a absolute millisecond, that got flipped upside down. And as a show, I will tell you that we will do these things today. We're gonna do a few things. We will bring you the best possible information. We have a guy who was there working close on the field. Former Bill Eric Wood uh, was doing color on the radio call. He'll join us, former Bill. Peter King will give us his insights and, and maybe a little bit into what happens from here, but that really doesn't matter right now. And we're gonna bring you perspective from a current player, how he's feeling, an NFL veteran who leads with his heart and cares about players and Mark Ingram who visits with us week to week. Um, and I can tell you that we as a show are gonna focus on compassion. We are sending our love, we're sending our player prayers, we're sending our strength to DeMar Hamlin in Cincinnati right now fighting. We are sending love to his family, his mother Nina, who is there with him, his loved ones, all of his teammates. That is the only concern right now. And we do this show, and as we do it, we hope and we pray to hear something, and we pray for his health and his well-being. I sit at this desk and I put on my makeup and my fake eyelashes and I sit here and uh, I'm on my couch just like everyone else watching these games. I start as a fan. It's how I started. It's how I've, I've gone through it through and through. I love this game. I love this game. And I'm lucky to know some of these teams, about some of these teams, to talk to some of these players. Even I'm lucky. And what we know, of course, is that DeMar Hamlin is a 24-year-old safety, and he's taken in the sixth round, and we've seen it plastered on every full screen from when this happened in the first quarter of action between the Bills and the Bengals last night. But from, from what I can tell, and much more significantly, DeMar's a fighter, and he's a young man who leads with gratitude. I mean, he someone who did not have it easy growing up, and I think his perspective is something that we should sort of hold on to and think about today. Um, he said the way he grew up teaches you to cherish everybody in your life because you never know who you'll lose. You could lose anybody. Everybody I talk to, I say, I love you, and that's neighborhood tradition. Before the draft, he said this, as I embark on my journey to the NFL, I will never forget where I come from and am committed to using my platform to positively impact the community that raised me. Uh, so this is just a little taste. He's a compassionate fighter. I talked to Maddie Glab. She was sharing some video. She was as close with the team as anybody. And I'm sending her my love and thoughts this morning as well. And she could just say, he's a great guy. I, 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 I want that out there. And she shared, um, shared some things as we all sort of collectively hope and have positive thoughts for a recovery. He is a positive thought. He's a force, as you can see, and we have to be that right back for him. I felt compassion last night. I gotta say, I'm about the most negative, cynical person ever. And the um, players making what Lisa Salters beautifully and eloquently described as a human wall to protect their brother out there uh, was an act of compassion, okay? The coaches, Zach Taylor, Coach Zach Taylor, Coach, 
Sean McDermott making their way to each other, away from each other, and coming to the obvious correct choice and pulling their players from the field. The Bengal fans standing there making a sign of support. It's a gesture, the gesture of Cincinnati itself, changing their lights blue to show compassion, to show humanity. That is what it's all about. And I saw last night, I gotta say, human beings are largely and mostly compassionate. There's that 1% that sucks, that are awful. Absolutely, it exists, it, there's, but largely and mostly compassionate, and that's important. We feel the need to embrace. We feel the need to huddle together. Burrow and Allen, like it's bigger than everything. And we feel the need to take action, whether that's prayer, whether that's checking in on loved ones. Um, and most effectively so far, donations made to a cause that we found out last night is near and dear to DeMar. And NFL fans, Bills fans especially, are relentless in their compassionate actions, quickly finding DeMar Hamlin's Toys for Tots campaign last night. It raised $2,500, and now it's over $3 million. That's how much has been donated. Over $3 million. Think about that in a little over 12 hours. And by the way, he started this drive before he was ever even an NFL player, before he was drafted, before he was up. He was a college kid doing this. And as you can see, we, we made the fancy QR code. Uh, in case you want to get in on the action, an action of compassion, humanity, community, and all of that. So this will be on the screen all show, maybe all week, I don't know. Uh, so give if you can. Listen, this is going to likely change a lot of things in the NFL. Maybe my personal relationship with it, maybe yours, collectively, all of us. Maybe it'll change some protocols. Maybe um, this will change how we feel about it, experience it, how we feel and see the NFL. I don't know that we'll know for a while, and it certainly doesn't matter right now. It's far from the most important thing. But I do think that we have an opportunity, and I don't want to be too Pollyanna about this, but almost an immediate opportunity to lead with more and continued compassion when it comes to each other, but our football players as well. Ryan Clark, brilliant. Perfect last night with Scott Van Pelt. I could not have been more compelled by what was a masterclass in both journalism, accountability, and compassion. We have to protect our players. I say this all of the time. And we have to check in on them today. Coaches need to be checked in on. T. Higgins. T. Higgins needs to be checked in on today. So continuing the humanity is what matters. We're, of course, hoping to hear something positive, uh, an update on DeMar Hamlin this morning during our live show. We'd love to hear from you guys, of course, and we'll be back with Eric Woods right after this. NFL World praying for DeMar Hamlin this morning. Uh, Bill saying thoughts and prayers of all the Bills Mafia supporting you. DeMar, Josh Allen sending out a tweet late last night saying, please pray for our brother. We saw him, of course, on the field. Daquan Jones praying with all that I am for DeMar Hamlin and his family. Number three, love you, bro. Joining us now, former Pro Bowl Center and current radio analyst for the Buffalo Bills, Eric Wood. Eric, thank you for joining, taking some time here. I know it must have been an extremely long night for you, a long drive for you. You were at Paycor last night on the radio call, so uh, it's a tough morning. And I'll start with this. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, I still feel like I'm just pretty shook up. And it was so odd in, in, in that stadium last night. And we've become so accustomed to seeing injury seeing at times stretchers um i think you said it perfectly when but you generally get that thumbs up and it wasn't long after demar being down on the ground and seeing the players reactions that you thought maybe that was not going to happen in this case that it just seems a lot more severe than anything else i've ever witnessed on a football field and then ultimately what anyone had really ever experienced on a football field and so um the stadium that was filled with so much electricity maybe the most electrifying maybe the loudest stadium in the entire season so far this year with the, wow. all the build-up to monday night football in silence it was just a powerful moment he just with the amount of respect that fans and teammates and everybody had uh for the situation and and really for tomorrow what was going through your head? I imagine you're in a radio booth. You're not right on the field, right? You're you're trying to figure it out. So as this is happening, what's going through your mind? Because you're not also, I, I'm sure you're objective in calling the game, but once something like this happens, like you go back to your nine seasons, all of your nine NFL seasons being a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, and it, it our conversation quickly turned from, 
how do you compartmentalize this as a player? How do you move on and go about and do your job to, okay, we are our only concern is Damar Hamlin and competitiveness aside, forfeit the game if you have to. Mm. You cannot put these players in a position with all they've been through emotionally right now to go back onto the football field. So the right decision was ultimately made, but trying to navigate that and it's, fairly similar to what I'm, I'm still doing right now. It's scouring Twitter, scouring any type of media that you possibly can to find an update. Who's going to give that first bit of great news? Uh, Cause you're just constantly looking for it. And that's what we were doing at the time as well. Uh, just the amount of time spent on the field last night was, was horrifying. I mean, almost 10 minutes of CPR. That's, that's not something you ever want to see in life. Um, and now you have, 70,000 people in a stadium all witnessing uh, a, a young man, a special young man on the field fighting for his life. We shared some quotes that show you what a special young man he is, special mindset, personality, uh, optimism. He's a fighter. What, you're part of the organization. You're near the team. What can you tell us about the kind of person, human, that Damar Hamlin is? So I actually got to cover him. I had the pleasure of covering him at the University of Pittsburgh when I was working for ESPN a couple of years ago. And Pat Narduzzi, their head coach, when we would do production meetings, he would just constantly rave about DeMar Hamlin, uh, DeMar Hamlin a kid from Pittsburgh, from McKees Rocks, and he plays at the University of Pittsburgh. And they were just in awe the way, uh, how mature he was, how he handled his business. And Pat Narduzzi told us that, there's going to be higher draft picks within our program than DeMar Hamlin, but DeMar is the pro. He acts like a pro. He looks like a pro. He's the best. And then he comes to Buffalo, immediately uses his platform for good off the field. There's countless pictures that are being shared of him Christmas shopping with kids and the impact that he tries to make off the field as well. Just a very, very special young man. And the relationship that he has with his teammates in the care and love and support shown through last night. And, um, you know, he, he's someone that within the organization, I heard you talk about Maddie Glab passing that along as well. Well, I can, I can reiterate that DeMar is a special young man. And we're of course sending all of our love and prayers to his family, his mother, Nina, who is somehow at that stadium at Paycor for this game uh, and able to be with him in the ambulance as Lisa Salters was explaining to us on the uh, ESPN broadcast last night. You being part of the broadcast, you being part of the team, uh, that I understand you drove home after this and it was uh, quite, what were you thinking about on that drive? And is it something that, you know, all players, former, current, not just Bills are thinking about what's sort of the communication among you and your peers? Yeah, it was just constant communication back and forth with media people, former teammates of mine, guys around the league saying, you know, what 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 happens moving forward? What changes moving forward? Um, you know, was the care correct? And it seems like the immediate response by all those involved in Cincinnati was absolutely incredible. So you're, you're so grateful for that. But there's just so much shock at this point, so much disbelief that that this could happen. And we just like we talked about before, you're so used to seeing injuries, but not like this. And this shook everybody to their core. Sean McDermott, someone that you played for, he and Zach Taylor have a moment on the field. They leave. Zach Taylor walks over once again, and they ultimately uh, decide to take their guys off the field. It's determined uh, in a bit. Some people are saying too long. It's not what matters right now, though, uh, that the game gets postponed. What did you make of how the coaches handled this last night? Yeah, I thought they handled it great, and there's no way they could put the players back out there right in that moment. And you know, there's a lot being said on both sides of what the timing was and if they were trying to get the guys to go out and play. And I would just encourage people to have some grace right now. Mm -hmm. This is an unprecedented situation that no one knew how to navigate in the moment. No one knew the severity of it um, other than those just right around the situation on the field. And so navigating something completely unprecedented, you know, no one had ill intentions with any decisions or calls or whatever was made and then you just have to give credit to the organizations making the proper call to shut the game down and we'll see moving forward how it shakes out you know there's a lot of decisions to make in regards to a game that had massive playoff implications but as someone who was a part of the organization as a player and remains a part of the organization if that means forfeiting the game to, to honor him and the guys on the team, so be it. Is that a testament to ownership, Sean McDermott? 
all the above. You know, the Pagulas really kind of started this organization of stability and class and this family atmosphere and this culture that everyone wants to replicate around the NFL now. I believe that starts when the Pagulas take over the team and then you hire Sean McDermott, you hire a Brandon Bean where there's complete alignment within everybody in the front office and, and coaching staff. And so it makes it uh, easier to navigate in situations like this when you have a leader like Sean McDermott who is maybe the most consistent person I've ever been around in my entire life. There's no one I would want to have running my organization at a moment like this than Sean McDermott. And he has a great combination of at times being able to separate himself from a situation and make great decisions, but also having that true relationship with everyone in the building to where there's a human element to his decision making as well. And I'm sure he's checking on his players, got them home safe last night. Uh, and, and anything about the game is the least important thing. And, and just what I know of Sean McDermott and my limited talks with him, uh, everything you're saying is, is a blessing, also a blessing that the first responders acted so quickly and were there. That's something that we shouldn't take for granted. Also a blessing is the support of what is the most unique, fervent, unrelenting fan base in their support uh, for what's going on. Speak to that a little bit for people out there. Uh, that may be watching, that may be wanting to donate. I think we have the QR code that we're taking donations for his uh, Toys for Tots charity uh, that that you mentioned earlier that was important to him before he was ever even an NFL player. Uh, Bills fans are something else. <laughs> they truly are. And Bills Mafia has gotten a reputation for jumping through tables, and that's a very minor part of the fan base that gets uh, exemplified through social media. This Bills fan base, which has a Bills backers bar in every city in the country, it's a, just a national passionate fan base. They do a lot to, to promote good out there. And what they've done so far, I believe there's over 142,000 people who have donated to DeMar's foundation, to this GoFundMe, and then also over $3.5 million donated as well right now. Not surprising to me one bit, but just an astronomical number when you consider how quickly this has all come about. And I do understand that in a moment like this, it's bigger than the Bills and Bills Mafia. Of that 142,000 people, I'm sure there's just many um, uh, fans of the NFL, people that were watching last night that want to do anything they can, and I would encourage those people to continue praying as well. Cincinnati's certainly a part of that. We'll see what the future holds as far as when this game is going to be played, how they handle it, whether it's a tie, a forfeit. We have yet to hear from Troy Vincent on that topic uh, or uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell. I'm wondering, you know, and it's only, it's been, it's very new. It's, you know, we're 20 hours from this, less than that, way less than that um, from what happened, and it's not paramount, but is there something that you're thinking can be, of, like, we can, like, take away from this, whether it's a player safety thing, whether it's a, the way the media covers it thing. You asked for grace, and I think that's really important, but is there something that we should be carrying with us as we uh, approach these next couple of days and continue to play for DeMar Hamlin? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question, Kay. And when you look at it, you know, yes, the on-field safety has gotten so much better in the NFL, and this wasn't a, a big egregious hit. I don't know how you prevent something like this from happening moving forward because it wasn't a big shot to the head. It wasn't a swipe at someone's legs. It was a it was a, a great tackle, how you should tackle someone. And unfortunately, he got his chest falling on in just the right time and mm -hmm. just the right way from what we're seeing from medical reports now. And so I don't I don't know what changes from that aspect. The support, the care for him that came on the field, from my indications, from what I've heard, was incredible and very timely. But, man, you know, I think after a game like last night, especially as those out there were in their fantasy football finals, likely, uh, or semifinals, the way the season's shaking out in the time of the season, maybe have a little bit more um, – compassion for some of these guys and understand that there's a human element where these guys all have families. And yes, this is a job. Yes, you're paid a lot of money to do it. And yes, it's what we love to do. And you're, you're ultimately playing a game with a ball for a living, which is a ton of fun. But there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of physicality that comes with that position in the NFL. Watching what happened last night, I can't imagine that 32 teams would react the same way as far as camaraderie, as far as, you know, getting together and, and even Stephon Diggs when they said we got to play or they, whoever said, and that's a whole other wormhole I'm not interested in today, uh, on who said warm up or who gave them that cue, whether it was the refs, whether it was the league, whatever. Stephon Diggs is out there like, let's, 
we have to go. Like, let's, you know, he's, he's obviously an emotional leader. Josh Allen shaken by this. This team does feel, and it always has felt under Josh Allen's stewardship, uniquely tight, uniquely close. And I'm not saying anything bad about the other teams, but there's something about this team. And I, I just wonder how that'll carry over in the next couple of days. Yeah, them, them being that close with each other makes them even more shook by what happened to one of their brothers. Mm. But it also will provide support for those guys in the organization. And, you know, that that culture, that closeness of this team happens because of a few different things. It, it happens because of the guys that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott have brought in. A lot of guys with, that are high character that work their tails off. And those guys generally are going to get along and respect each other. They also have are led by a quarterback in Josh Allen that doesn't have an ego at one bit you know, throws his body on the line each and every week. And so when you're following the leadership of a guy like that, that brings the closeness as well. And then you're also talking about a city like Buffalo, where, you know, the people that live furthest from each other might live 15 or 20 minutes as opposed mm. to a big city where you might be an hour and a half away from your teammates. So we get to spend a lot of time with each other outside the building. And, you know, I spent my entire career in Buffalo, so I have nothing else to compare it to. But when guys would come into the Bills, they would say how special it is that because of the proximity where we live, we're all out kind of out in Orchard Park away from downtown, that it, it secludes you and it makes you closer as a unit. And, and it shows, and it certainly showed last night. I keep, you know, Eric, I'm listening to you, and I'm so grateful for you coming on. We keep looking at my phone like, give me the good update. Like, give me something to hold on to, a little bit of positivity, which is what everyone's looking for and everyone was certainly looking for uh, last night on the road in Cincinnati. We appreciate you, Eric, very much uh, for taking your time and giving us on, um, some perspective on what is a special human, uh, Damar Hamlin, who is fighting for his life this morning. Yeah, my pleasure, Kay. Thank you. I appreciate you, Eric. We'll be back. We will have uh, Mark Ingram on the show, a current player. We were talking to player safety with him last week, and we'll do it again today. Welcome to Up and Adams. Uh, we are continue to wait for news on DeMar Hamlin, and as we do, the outpouring of love from his NFL family continues. Uh, the GOAT Tom Brady says, we're praying for DeMar and his family this morning in Tampa. Moments like this put into perspective what it means to play this game we love. Thankful for our communities in Cincinnati and Buffalo for the overwhelming level of care and support. I know they'll continue to provide. Kenny Pickett, of course, long relationship going back to college with you every step of the way three. Uh, and he added Hamlin Island, Patrick Mahomes, um, of course, extending an emoji that translates only into prayers, good thoughts and compassion. We don't know yet what's going on or an update as we wait. And we'll be back right here on Up and Adams. NFL world continues to react shock loss and can't even sleep right now thinking about my brother so much. That's certainly relatable. All Hi, uh, hopes, all good thoughts, all positivity and prayers towards DeMar Hamlin this morning. Avante Maddox, keep fighting three. Um, we heard from Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Mark Ingram, pull through Young King. And we have Mark Ingram with us as he joins us every week. Uh, our favorite running back ever is here. Mark, how are you this morning? And um, uh, it, this morning is tough, you know, um, just devastated at what happened last night. Uh, I've been thinking about DeMar and his family. I've been thinking about all the Bills, all the Bengals. Uh, it's, 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 I'm at a loss for words, and I'm, I'm, I'm devastated. Watching it last night, just tearing up on the couch, even this morning driving into work, uh, just thinking about DeMar and his family and just hoping that he pulls through and that we get some positive news here. When you're watching it on TV and we're seeing, you know, Josh Allen's face, Joe Burrow's face, we're seeing Tredavious White, Stephon Diggs. I mean, I can't pretend to know what that's like as somebody who's played the game. But when you're seeing those images while you're on your couch, what are the, what's going through your head? Like, just knowing, like, how those guys feel, how, how I feel about my brothers in this locker room, how I feel about my brothers on other teams, to be able to, you know, we sign up for a lot of things. We know mm -hmm. that this game, this game is brutal. That this game is physical. That this game comes with injuries. That this game comes with concussions. That this game sometimes has neck and spine injuries. Like uh, I've seen compound fractures where people have to get rushed to the field with arteries and and, and and stuff like that. And like that takes the air out of that takes the air out of the stadium. That takes the air mm -hmm. out of both sidelines when you see someone getting carted off. But to s have to witness. Um, you know, defibrillators being used or CPR being used, like those are life um, saving tactics. And to have to witness that and to even, 
have the fathom of possibly even playing the game. Like it's it's just this I can't imagine what those guys are going through watching that happen to one of their brothers, one of their teammates. Um uh Damar's mother was there at the game, her having to just the, the unknown, having to go down on that field and and I'm just thankful that she was there and be able to be with him. But just to see the emotion on all those guys' faces, um, you can see the guys are crying. You can see the guys are in uh, distress, they're in pain. Um, and all we can do is pray for comfort and um, pray for a recovery for DeMar and, and, and comfort for his family right now in these tough times. And um, we're all going through that pain right now. And we just want, you know, to hear good news or about DeMar and his situation. And we're waiting to hear good news. We don't have any yet. The latest we heard is from the Bills last night, just that he was there and sedated. Um, and you mentioned something that's really important. It's a, hu it's a human thing. It's not a football player thing. It's not. Granted, there's a brotherhood there. We'll, dip, we'll tap into that in a second. But you tap into this compassionate feeling of his mom, Nina, is there. We feel her fear. We feel her pain. You're seeing it play out. Um, and, and it sort of joins us all together. And then you drive to work this morning. You're still thinking about it. What, be real with me. What is it like in there today? Man, usually, like, even in the training room, like, it's usually, you know, good energy, people laughing, people kind of like, you know, cracking jokes, like, showing videos like whatever it may be and it's just kind of like heavy in there this morning um not a lot of you know laughter not a lot of fun and uh i think it's just weighing on everyone in the nfl world everyone you know because it's just devastating it, it really is like it's just tragedy like i said we know we signed up for a lot of stuff in this league man but Never, never anything of that magnitude. And uh, we just want our brother, our family, all our Bills family, the Bengals family, everyone that was involved in, in that tragedy that happened last night, we just, I'm just praying for comfort for them. I'm just praying for um, healing for them. And uh, man, I, it's tough, it's tough, but you could definitely feel that it's heavy in here today. Mark, what is that bond like? Can you try to describe it? It's such a, you know, you see it and from the outside and you see what's going on in the field and something like this is going on and there's, it's very human, it's very real, but it's, it was such a great example of how the NFL is special, how the NFL is this brotherhood, Bills, Bengals, everyone together in prayer and concern for a teammate and an opponent. Um, what is that bond like? The bond is unbreakable and it's a bond that, you know, it's hard to explain and people don't understand. I mean, we sacrifice so much being away from our families and we spend more time with each other than we actually do with our families during the season. So essentially, your team is your family. All the equipment staff, all the training staff, all the coaches, everyone, it, we're a family. We spend more time with each other than we do our own family. So it's like when, when something bad happens on the field, like, even off the field, like you guys are there for each other. You check in on people, you making sure people are good. Like I, I, I don't be like, what's up? I be like, man, how, how's your heart? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how you doing? How, how's everything off the field? So just to be able to, you know, you learn about people, you learn where they from, you learn how they grew up. You Sometimes you, you meet their family members, you see them on FaceTime. Like you guys are together so much throughout the course of a year that you become to, you know, love, love your teammates and love them like brothers. They become extended family to you, mm -hmm. and you carry that forever. That's what's so special about this game. That's what's so, so special about the Pigs game is that um, we have brothers for life and family for life because of this game that we love, this game that we desire to play, this game that we have dreams and aspirations to play. And that brotherhood, it just gets stronger and stronger, you know, each and every day, each and every game, each and every season because you just spend so much time together. You, you sacrifice blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you see people have injuries, overcome the injuries, and uh, you just kind of gravitate to each other, and you guys just become intertwined, and um, that brotherhood and it becomes a family thing. And when you see something like that happen, like your heart goes out to them, and every single person on that field, I, I, I can't imagine what was going through their hearts, what's going through their mind, and, and the pain that they're feeling, um, witnessing that, and um, what they're going through right now. So. Mm -hmm. um, this is a brotherhood, this is a family, and 
we're going to be here to support each other no matter what, regardless. And obviously, we're all just praying for Demar, his family, his mother. Um, he's a he, he's a brother. He he's a he's a son. He's a friend. We're just praying for all those involved in his life. And we're obviously playing Demar just pull us through, man. And because um, we need that, uh, I need that, and uh, I think everyone needs that. Has there been a message in that locker room yet? Because I'm thinking about what it's like there, how heavy it is there today. And then Coach Allen, you know, coaches are calling each other, as we understand, via Twitter or, uh, to say, how are we coping with this? How are we checking in with our players? What's the message in there from, from DA and, and you as a veteran in the locker room? So today's just Tuesday. I'm sure that mm -hmm. we'll be talking about this tomorrow. Like I said, I walked into the training room today to do my rehab, do my therapy, and it was just kind of heavy. It's kind of like a dark cloud over the training room. Like I said, it's usually positive. It's usually like high energy, um, you know, people laughing, people cracking jokes on each other. And there was none of that this morning. Um, there was none of that this morning. Like you walk in, it was just kind of quiet. It was kind of somber. It was kind of just like heavy in there. And, and you just kind of know why, you know, that one of our brothers in this league is, is fighting. And, until, you know, we get news that he's okay, I don't think nobody will be able to, you know, relax or breathe easy. So we haven't had a message yet as a, an entire team yet because we haven't met as a team yet. <clears throat> but I'm sure that we will be discussing this tomorrow. And then, yeah, there's the T. Higgins side of this too, right? And, and we saw him leaving the stadium with his mother. And I'm sure your thoughts gravitated towards how he must be feeling on that drive to work this morning or was it, you know, whether it was last night. Um, how does a locker room support a teammate going through that? You just have to be there for him in any capacity. Let him know that, you know, you could call, you could rely on me, you could lean on me at any moment, anytime you need me, anytime you're feeling down, or anytime you feel, you know, any type of wrong creeping to your head that you could reach out to us, that, that we'll be there for you. You can call me, I'm there for you. Like, Regardless of whatever it is, man, we just want to make sure these guys, you know, mental and emotional state, that they can be supported. There is no way to tell someone how to cope with this because I don't think anyone has experienced this or thought or is trained in, you know, helping through this because none of us has ever seen it or experienced it. Like, we've seen injuries, we've seen concussions, and most of the time, you know, regardless of what happens on that field, like, when they're getting rolled off or carted off, like, you know, we can see that they're awake or that, mm -hmm. they're, that they're thumbs up. And, like, that can give you peace of mind to, you know, keep pushing through for them. And um, when when you don't have that, when you have defibrillators and CPR being performed on the field, like, that's something that we're not accustomed to seeing that nobody's trying to see. So um, T. Higgins, DeMar Hamlin, the Bengals, the Bills, all the NFL community is mourning heavy. It's on our hearts. And we're just praying for the best possible outcome for DeMar Hamlin and his family, for T. Higgins and his and his family. I know he's feeling, um, I can't imagine how he's feeling. Mm. But um, I just pray for those guys, man, that they have comfort in their hearts. And that'll, of course, be provided to them by their teammates, by their coaches, by all of that, like you're saying, in this community of support. Ryan Clark was amazing last night, candid. Yeah, he did a great job. Just who knows where he was. He got in a suit, was in a suit, and he gets on the set and he starts um, just being really real and get, being really insightful like you are right now. He tweeted this hour, the next snap of a football will be one of the scariest snaps we have ever watched. Take me to the next snap of football that you play. What are your feelings on that? Man, like, like I said earlier, like, we all know what we signed up for, that this is a brutal game, that it's a physical game, and that injuries come with it. But being able to witness what we saw last night, um, it's, 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 it's scary. It's scary knowing that playing this game that we love, playing this game that we play to, you know, provide a better life for our family, like, that there could be some devastating outcomes like it's a physical game it's a, it's a brutal game it's a physical game and like we sign up for a lot of things you know but you never sign up for having to fight for your life and um it, it, it's scary to think about yeah it's almost like we we don't want to admit that that is something that could 
happen, that that's a risk that's, you know, or, or uh, an outcome that is an actual reality. I think we're all complicit in that. We all think, you know, I almost felt when I, what you're saying about, like, I'm waiting for the thumbs up. I'm waiting for the something. Or, like, even just Josh Allen's face to look a little relieved, right? Just a yeah. little, like, show me the body language that I'm so like selfish that are greedy and unaware and like um d demanding of like i take it for gr i felt like that i was like i take it for yeah. granted that i'm it's not like is it it's i'm waiting for that because nothing else in my head is possible even though it yeah. is possible and it's a really yeah. hard thing that that everyone has to deal with and i'm just wondering going forward and you're a veteran and you've got kids how is this going to affect your relationship with football mark Man, you think about it, like, I'm sitting there, like, I have a son, and he loves football. Like, he wants to play catch when the games are on. <clears throat> he knows the Bills and the Bengals are playing. He wants to play catch. Like, do I want my son playing a game that could possibly have him clinging on to life? Do I want to continue to play a game that could possibly have me clinging on to life when I have so much to live for, when we all have so much to live for, when DeMar has so much to live for and his young life is just beginning? Is this something that we want to do, you know? And, um, you know, my sister text me like I wouldn't even mm. be mad if you retired you know what I mean like I'm like I'm like well I'm not retiring but I am extremely devastated and hurt and in pain by what is going on on this TV so um I love this game this game has done so much for me has given me brothers and family that I have forever through this pig skin I have best friends guys that I could rely on and call at any moment that I have my back at, the, at an instant and the same for me and um it's just, it's, when you see that happen last night, what happened to DeMar, it just puts things in perspective. And um, I'm praying for DeMar Hamlin and his family because I'm in a lot of pain right now. Um, I'm, I shed tears for him. I'm still fighting him right now. You know, I, it, it, it's, it's no words. It's really no words, man. I just, I just want to hear good news and I just, that's what we need as players. Like when you when you see the thumbs up, like you were saying, when you see someone wave, you know that they're okay, and that gives you the the that gives you the ability to push through for them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you don't have that, um, it, it's it's tough. It's scary, and um, just hoping for good news for man Demar and his family. It's tough. I know it's tough, Mark, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sharing that, your feelings. You care about players, and it's so obvious. And, I, you know, a big part of what I was saying is that players have to check in, be checked in with. Like, there's got to be your locker room, especially the locker rooms that were involved, but, like, we got to check in with these players, these coaches, the T. Higgins. The, everyone needs to be checked in with because there's an emotional and mental impact that is happening right now and that is going to have to be, you know, to be dealt with. And I'm just sending you, your whole locker room, the love, and I know that that's happening. I literally know that that's happening in your locker room because of you, Mark. So thank you for everything you do for the league and your brilliant career. And we love you. All love. I love you, too. Thank you so much. Thanks, and um, we're, we're all going to be here for each other. That's all we have is each other. So we all got to lean on each other and be with each other and make sure everyone's doing good in their hearts. And we're looking for good news, waiting for good news as we continue yes. to pray for DeMar Hamlin. Thanks, Mark. We'll be back right after this. Thank you, Kay. So grateful to Mark Ingram for hopping on our show. Eric Wood, who was just at Paycor last night doing the radio color commentary for this uh, on the radio. He popped by the show as well with his thoughts. A former Bill, of course, spending all nine seasons with Buffalo. Our next guest, a leading voice in the NFL with his must-read Football Morning in America column every week and podcaster, Peter King. You are here, the Peter King Podcast. I know you're busy, and I know this is something that you covering the game for decades have not seen. What do you make of what happened last night and into today? Okay, I think, you know, obviously I've covered the NFL for 39 years. I've never seen anything like that before. You know, what was so different is usually you have, you know, there's 29 medical, minimum of 29 different medical personnel at every NFL stadium for every game. And those range from EMTs who really helped uh, DeMar Hamlin on Monday night. Uh, and they go to orthopedists. There, there's even a, uh, an emergency intubation specialist at every NFL game. So there obviously was a tremendous support system to do everything humanly possible 
um, to revive uh, DeMar Hamlin after his heart stopped. And they did uh, revive him. And so that is the bit of good news that obviously you have to hang your hat on. I think the one other thing that occurred to me is just usually you see players, you know, with their heads bowed, somebody tears an ACL or Mm -hmm. breaks a rib and is laying there or, you know, whatever is and, and, you know, is in pain. But, you know, life goes on. I think what was so different last night is to see so many players despondent and either weeping or on the verge of tears on both teams. I thought that what uh, the two head coaches did was show an awful lot of leadership uh, because it appeared as though, and look, we don't know anything yet, but it appeared as though both Zach Taylor of the Bengals and Sean McDermott of the Bills, uh, after the ambulance pulled away, I'm not saying we're dead set on not playing, but we're pretty sure that they were not going to resume the game. And the NFL, of course, saying that the emergency action protocol, like you mentioned, I also, you know, listened to Jeff Miller, who was on top of it yesterday and mentioned all of those things. Uh, A lot of criticism this morning, and it doesn't belong for today. Today is, of course, just about hope and and prayers for DeMar Hamlin, but it's already starting this. It took over an hour to postpone the game. And when when I when I think about it, I think a business, you know, they they have to have protocol for or anticipate that something could go wrong like this. It's just good business to do that. What was your reaction to how the NFL handled the situation? And all credit to the coaches for for getting their guys off the field, of course. Kay, I think there's so much we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of people who are saying, well, Joe Buck said that uh, multiple times that this players are going to warm up for five minutes and the game is going to continue or words to that effect. I don't know where that came from. Did it come from somebody in the league? I don't know. Um, I would prefer to wait because clearly after something like that happens and after a player has to be revived on the field, taken away in an ambulance, it seems so obvious that those players who just witnessed that are not going to be able to play football again uh, on that day. But I don't know what happened. And I don't think any of us really know exactly what happened where that information came from. I think I'd prefer to wait before saying this person was wrong or that person was wrong. And you're an expert for that reason. And you, I consider you to be a historian of the NFL, an archivist in your own right uh, of the NFL and a really powerful voice. You know, you've seen this league go through its ups and downs. What should we as fans take away from the situation today? It's a great question, Kay. I think it's hard to say, well, this is a this is a crisis for the league. <laughs> you know, Mike Ryan, who does the medical, uh, uh, who's a medical consultant, he's a former NFL head athletic trainer. He is the medical consultant for NBC Sports, and I spoke to him this morning, and he goes, you know, it's possible that DeMar Hamlin, you know, we see these hits all the time in the NFL, Uh, It's possible that DeMar Hamlin, in essence, was uh, just hit in the absolute perfect place at the right time. And he said there was a a, a lacrosse player. I think Mike lives in Jacksonville. Mm. There was a lacrosse player who took a ball to the chest this year and fell down and his heart stopped. And, you know, but by later in the season, that lacrosse player was playing. He's not meaning to equate the situations. He's just meaning that if, if the player's heart was restarted fairly quickly, then that person can resume a normal life, whether it, whether or not it includes football. But those are things we just don't know if they happen yet. But the point is, I don't know how anybody says, oh my God, the NFL has a medical crisis. This is, I hate to say it, this is an incredibly fluky happenstance that is a lot different from the Tua Tagovailoa head mm-hmm. trauma uh, pattern uh, this year. So I think it, we, we should understand that this is a very, very dangerous sport. And I hate to say it, but if you watch football, you have to understand that events like this have a chance, even though it's a microscopic chance of happening. And I was just talking to Mark Ingram, and it really, see, you know, he's going through the emotions live on the air, and 
it's sim I, I share a similar blissful ignorance about it. I know it's a possibility. The percentage is so small, like, and, and to see him sort of come into that uh, on the air and, and toy with the possibility of it happening to him, a loved one weighing the decision of whether or not he wants to keep playing, of course, as a player who's been in league longer than a decade uh, and has, uh, uh, you know, children and all of that. Um, as far as we only have a couple minutes here, as far as how the media is covering this, maybe that I'm trying to I'm trying to find like a lesson to take out of this for today. The way the media is covering it, are you, is it okay? Is there anything that we can do better or some advice that you'd like to give to how this event is covered? You know, I noticed on Twitter last night uh, following the story because obviously I, I follow the beat people for the Bengals and the, and the Bills and, and, you know, and a lot of other news people covering the NFL. It's okay sometimes, Kay, to say, I don't know. Mm. It's okay to say, Let's let the situation unfold. It's okay for silence to be golden. And that's what I would encourage people in the media to do right now. If you have information, great. Uh, get it out there as soon as, and as reliably as possible. If not, it's okay. We can wait. There's nothing urgent about this. No one cares who gets the scoop on the next development with DeMar Hamlin. The only thing we care about is hearing good news in the next few hours. It's well said, Peter King, and um, sadly, likely impossible in the world that we live in and the way that we cover the game. We appreciate your time so much, and I'm sure you're very busy. Um, and thank you, and we'll see when that game is played, the possibility of it being within two days. But for now, we say goodbye to everyone. Stay safe, and all of our pairs, prayers for Damar Hamlin. And thank you to Peter King, Mark Ingram, and Eric Wood. We'll see you tomorrow.